Hello, Miss Pneumatic here. In part one, we learned what pneumatics is, or the principle of pneumatics. Then, we learned how a pneumatic system compresses and stores air, removes impurities, and adjusts the state of the air. So let's resume with the control segment. So this was air quality control segment, and it is followed by the control segment. In the control segment, the direction and volume of the airflow can be controlled to control the movement of the actuator. Various types of pneumatic valves can be used to control the direction of the airflow. By changing the direction in which the compressed air flows, the actuator can be moved forward or backward. Also, the volume of the airflow can be controlled by using a flow controller, such as a speed controller to control the speed of the actuator movement. After creating compressed air, removing impurities, and controlling the air pressure, direction, speed, and so on, the actuator can be operated. One example of an actuator that is operated using compressed air is a cylinder. Cylinders can move in a linear motion, which is the most basic type of movement, and in various other directions according to the pre-designated angle and so on. I'll explain the different types of cylinders in more detail in a video focusing on cylinders. So that was a general overview of a pneumatic system, from compression of air to transmission of force to perform work. Aren't you curious as to what a pneumatic system actually looks like? I tried to bring as many components of a pneumatic system as possible to show you guys. Here are the components I explained to you earlier. Then let's start with our first component. This is an air compressor. As I explained in part one, an air compressor sucks in air and compresses it. As you can see here, there is a pump that sucks in air so that it can be compressed. This air compressor comes with an air tank at the bottom. The air tank stores the air that has been compressed by the pump. Next, let me show you the FRL part. The leftmost filter removes impurities, dust, and oil from the compressed air. The regulator in the middle is a controller that reduces the air pressure to the desired output pressure. The lubricator supplies a lubricant to allow the actuator to move as smoothly as possible. Next is a direction controlling device. This is a pneumatic valve called the solenoid valve. A solenoid valve changes the direction of airflow and this determines whether the cylinder will move forward or backward. So it is with this valve that the cylinder can be controlled. What you see here is a pneumatic cylinder, which is an actuator. The cylinder rod moves in and out of the cylinder, thereby moving the object that is connected to it. That brings us to the end of today's lesson on the principles of pneumatics and pneumatic systems. Isn't it amazing that a machine can be operated by compressing the air in the atmosphere? Compressed air is actually used very commonly in our everyday lives. So join me again to learn how and where pneumatic systems are used day to day. Then I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. If you find this video helpful, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Miss Pneumatic Channel is working together with KCC Precision.